So can you talk a little bit about what your style says about you? I'm from South Sudan, so in the village where I was born, people literally walked around naked and decorated in beautiful tribal jewelry or makeup. Seeing my culture being naked or self-expressive definitely helped me be more confident with my body, at least when I was back home. <laughs> but um, when I came to America, it, no, I didn't feel that confident. South Sudan have been going through a war, a civil war for over two decades. Um, I was born during the second civil war, so there were a lot of discrimination happening against darker skinned people and Christian people. Having us, the darker skinned people, being enslaved, genocide, killed, violence. Personally, our home got attacked. But I was really young. I was like five, six years old. I didn't really understand what's going on. All I know was one time my mom said, we are going to leave and I'm taking you girls. And we ended up being in a ship and traveled and we ended up in Egypt. I have over 20 sisters and brothers. We were all living together in my, in my home in South Sudan. So now, it was me, my mother, and my two sisters all alone in Egypt and basically disappeared, left everything behind. We stayed in Egypt three, four years, and all three, four years, my mom was working, so I had to become the second mom to my younger sisters. So I was taking them to school at the age of nine, eight or nine by myself. And as we're doing that, the Egyptians tease us and discriminate against us because we are black and we are dark people. Grown adult Egyptians, guys or women, will make us get up from our seats so that they can sit down. Um, sometimes when they're getting off at a certain stop, everyone will throw things at us from the windows and spit on us. So every single day was just, we're battling. We basically end up losing our childhood. I didn't have a childhood. Mm -hmm. I had to grow up whether I like it or not. Now that I'm older and I'm also a mom, I totally understand why my mom did what she did and how strong of a woman she had to basically put on a strong face. Finally, we got our sponsorship. We came and I'm 14 years old and um, America, no English, don't speak any words of English at all, no friends and no people that we can connect or relate to. We were in a dangerous place. It was, we were living in the projects, like there were crazy things happening in our building all the time, drugs, uh, prostitution, whatever. It opened our eyes that, you know what? The problem is not only in our country. There's problems all over the world. So my mom did her research, found some relatives in San Diego within three months because she knew this was not the environment I want to raise my children in. And we were all going to school, the same school together. And then that's when all hell broke loose about more discrimination. But now the discrimination is coming from people who are like us, black people. Were you in a mostly black school? Yeah, mostly black, Hispanic, and like a little bit of whites. At this point, I was completely insecure about my look, myself, my skin, my, my, my skinniness because people always commented, oh my God, you're so skinny. You think you're, you're not hurting me by saying that? Sometimes I, I felt like I wish I was somebody else. I wish I was born into a different family. We have been made to feel so bad about the darkness of your skin to the point where some of us secretly think about bleaching their skin and becoming lighter. And, and then seeing other Sudanese people that are bleaching themselves, it's like, okay, maybe I should do that too. What really changed that thought completely was when I got into the modeling industry. Because now pe my ugly dark skin that I have been made fun of, it's so fabulous in the industry, people love it. So that helped me like look at myself differently. Ever since I came to America, every single day of my life, I would hear from some random person, 
hey, have you tried modeling? You should. I had no idea what modeling was. And then um, we did some research, my cousin and I. We went to a scouting convention that was happening in California with um, models and agencies that came. I was 16 years old at that time and I ended up getting picked by 16 different agencies from all over the world. So when I turned 18, I kind of dibble and dabbled into it a little bit, going to LA, and um, I was also working in an airport, so it, you know people would approach me at the airport, come, you should model, you should model, you need to go to New York. Finally, I, I made it to New York, I took that risk, and it was like, oh my God, I love New York. I ended up, um, with major models and within that um, time frame of modeling I realized so much superficial people around and materialism and people caught up in a world that really doesn't matter it made me dig deeper into why am I even coming to model now okay if I'm gonna be a model I have to be a model with a purpose. I'm not just gonna model and be a cute girl in a magazine and have n absolutely no voice. I don't connect with that. And so I just decided to go on my own. Be I became um, my own a agency because I was told, hey, if you're not looking, oh, you're Sudanese, you're a black, you're a black Sudanese girl, whatever. Okay, we're gonna have you look like Alec Wek. That's, that's basically every Sudanese girl have to look like Alec Wek. Mm -hmm. Every black girl has to look like Chanel Iman. You know, we're not all one person. We're, we're different people, we're different shades, and we should be accepted in so the, all the different ways we are. I needed to stand up, and I stood up. Whether I have an agency or not, Mari Malek will be seen mm -hmm. and she will paint her, herself, her art, her identity. You don't have to look like what a certain person. You don't have to act like a certain person. Just truly be you, genuinely be you, and magic will happen. Right now, what so many of us have been sleeping for such a long time, so many centuries. It's time for us to say, you know what? Fuck everybody who think I should suppress my identity, myself. You know, fuck everybody who think I need to dumb down my art. No, I'm gonna go off. So what I do now, I use the modeling and the DJing world, because I'm a DJ, to create awareness for my country, South Sudan. 80% of our country is unable to read and write, 64% is women, 51% is children, and our country is in a place where it's time for us to rebuild. Ooh, ooh. Let's get into the nitty gritty. Get in there. <laughs> And you know how they say sometimes what goes up must come down? I also feel like what's down must go up. <laughs> we are in a world where we have been taught and conditioned to be fearful. Fear that if I don't, you know, go to work as exactly as the system is telling me, I will never live, I will never survive, I will be looked down at, I won't have enough money, I won't have friends, my family won't love me. That's what we're all focused on. And then when we focus on that, we forget that, hey, maybe you should say fuck fear. And it's time for us to stop thinking that you and I are totally different person. You are not my problem. Actually, yes, you are my problem. It's time for the world to look at one another as a human race and not like a black race or a white race or Jews or whatever. You are all human. You bleed the same. You're born the same. You die the same. Why is in your body a good place to be? 
in my body. It is a good place to be because my body is a temple. I give it that respect and that's how I met my husband. Because I was treating my body like a temple. I really was, I was um, celibate for like a year. Um, I was mentally accepting that my soulmate and or twin flame does exist because I truly believe that and I had several fucked up relationships don't don't waste my energy that's what I was telling myself don't marry don't waste your energy talking to some stupid guy and maybe even sleeping with them just because know know your worth and when I started to know my worth, I was able to manifest what was worthy of me. Beautiful, that was amazing. Heidi, uh, I already know how you feel, you already said it. That was incredible. Crazy. That was so beautiful. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank, Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. you so much.